come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast coming your way every Saturday like we always do, whether you're ready or not, because we're taking over the world one podcast listener at a time. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Holly. I'm yeah, sorry, I got Sean's distracted by distracted. the cheese crunchies. It just says cheese crunchies no, on the bag. We need to open this in the book because this is like the most delicious snack mix. Hoop it's mix. just all it? it's like all the favorite like it's hoop junk mix food. With yeah, basketball shit. Basketball pretzels. party mix. But it just says cheese but crunchies. But it has like it has bottom, Cheetos, Doritos, barbecue Fritos, pretzels, and tortilla chips. It's like all well, the favorite is, junk food snacks. It is a party here tonight yeah. because Holly picked a movie. I Holly, pick, what movie do we pick tonight? I picked for the second time, ah. <laughs> second time's a charm, um, I picked Cellar Dweller. Cellar Dweller. From so tonight years. we actually watched We, we actually did. watched it. See, it doesn't Yay. only happen to me. I know. <laughs> COVID, uh, from, COVID ruined the party. Yes, from what year? That's okay. Um, 87, 88, 87, depends, yeah. depends, yeah. Uh, directed by? Uh, John Carl Beekler. Yes. Mm-hmm. How do we know John Carl Beekler? You should know John you Carl Beekler. You should know Beekler. John Carl Beekler. Yeah, he's done, uh, he's done quite a bit as far as um, special effects goes. Yes. Directing, yeah. he's done a few things. He did Dungeon Master, Troll, um, Friday the 13th Part 7. Mm-hmm. So he's done his fair share, but uh, people usually know his work because of his special effects. Yes. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, the guy who designed yeah. the best looking Jason. And directed that In, movie. Indeed. Yeah. That is yeah. the best yeah. looking yeah. Jason. And directed that godforsaken movie. <laughs> <laughs> so his director uh, skills, you're saying, are he's better as no, a no, special no. effects uh, well, guy. Well, maybe. Uh, well, he's definitely better as a special effects guy. I don't necessarily blame him for part seven because I think I cut to shit. Yeah, yeah, but it was directed. Hor- I was it written was, bad, well, directed yeah, but bad. But there's still it's some good stuff movie. in that movie. <laughs> Son of a, like, no, but, it all, but, all, here, but, yeah. all, but it all centers around the effects is what's yeah, the good yeah, part. Yeah. So yeah. I guess That's when it gets is. good is yeah, right, at the yeah. end. Where yeah. yeah, yeah, when there's you know actually a set piece besides. Yeah, I never saw a Troll. No, I've never seen that. Never saw Troll. Not really? to be confused with uh, this is good. Troll. No, troll I haven't seen two. it. Yeah, I didn't know that he did troll before somebody did troll. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen best worst. Well, movie, I know though. somebody did troll. I was like, you, before <laughs> troll two. I you, were aware, you weren't aware of something I'm, called I'm, Troll Two I'm was aware, a sequel. I'm aware there was a troll. Sean only sees in sequels. Only sequel. He he doesn't see original movies. He does It's like it's like you dog have, vision. No, I yeah. have to see the second one first. So you have sequel blindness, whereas yeah. you don't see the first one. Yeah, it doesn't exist to you. I'm always aware of. Them, but I'm just like, well, I know that story so well. Let's see yeah. what they do in the next one. Yeah. You watched Empire Strikes Back. You're like, there was a first one? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, this must no. have been a hot time for Beekler because I remember, like, uh, this was when I was following along in Fangoria. Mm. This was on the he cover. He had done. It was. Well, I remember, yeah, because. Because I was like, well, who is this guy who's directing Friday the 13th Part 7, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I remember right before that, he had done, I think, the makeup effects on Prison, the Rennie Harlan movie uh-huh. that got Rennie Harlan a job uh, in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but Prison was where Beekler met, I think, where he met Kane Hodder, because Kane Hodder was the stunt coordinator on Prison, mm-hmm. which had Viggo Mortensen in it. And then... They ended up teaming up, and then that was uh, uh, kismet history, mm-hmm. right? He put uh, Friday the Thirteenth mask, uh, the Jason mask, on Kane Hodder. Yep. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, a bit of an icon collaboration there. But this is uh, so he's done like a ton of makeup effects yeah, stuff I over mean, the he years. Did, uh, he, Reanimator, which was you know definitely um, inspired a lot of parts of this movie <laughs> right yeah well it's um, made by empire pictures which mm-hmm. was charles band's company before full moon i didn't see charles band's name on this one Mm-mm. but it's empire pictures it is but Unless he sold it i don't think so because it's shot in italy in chinichita right which we would we establish that i was at the, the castle, the castle like freak the castle? episode yeah. mm-hmm. we're talking about yeah yeah, yeah yeah maybe it was uh i don't know maybe somebody else's producers at that point. I seem to also remember that Beekler may have worked on all the major 80s slasher icons. Yeah, he's done work on um obviously Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, 4, right? 4. Um he obviously did Jason. Freddy's Dead, Curse of Michael Myers, 
Um, I thought he's he, done. Who did Perfect? He worked on a, like a Texas Chainsaw movie. He's gotten all the big franchises. I don't oh, think shit. he's done Texas. Oh, no, maybe he hasn't no. done Texas Chainsaw. I don't think he has. And he has passed away, right? Yeah. 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 A couple of years ago. Yeah. Like, I was going to see if he had Elvis. the horror he got. You know? right. Yeah, no. maybe not. Cause, so maybe I was thinking yeah. Freddie Jason. Well, he, I, I think. The story was at the time, I think the original version of Halloween 4 like didn't have the gore in it, and they called him up because mm-hmm. they were like, we need to punch this up. Yep. Yeah. And brought him in for like insert shots. Uh, the, the stuff inside of the ambulance was, I think, maybe directed yeah, by John Carpenter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that kind of stuff. If yeah. my memory is correct. I think you're correct. It sounds right. so, yeah. Well, New Line Cinema was doing Leatherface back then. Texas Chainsaw Massacre three, mm-hmm. so we're thinking he didn't have a hand in. I don't that, think so. Though. I don't. I didn't. Maybe see anything. not officially, but who no, knows? that was K and B. K and mm-hmm. B did. Okay. Yeah, right. I didn't see anything on his his IMDb or Maybe wiki or some, anything. Uh, some crosstalks, some phone calls. We're like, hey, what's up? Yeah. What'd you do? Yeah. I know we ended up doing. Um, I mean, he's directed other stuff since, right? But nothing that anybody would. Have um. Heard of. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think I think I listed off like the. Most well-known ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, like, he's forever yeah. going to be the guy who directed Friday the 13th Part 7. Mm-hmm. The New Blood. A New Blood? The New Blood. Don't you miss Troll Cell? Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies go oh, to college! Shit. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did. The most naked one. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most naked Ghoulies. How could I forget that one? <laughs> that was, that was, a, That's se- what it was a seminal four? moment in my young. That was 91. <laughs> well, yeah, but where are we in the Ghoulies franchise? At the... Well, that was three. That was three. Okay. They go to, go to college, college in the third one. What do we do so on it's this all show? all fraternity. And Wait, we he directed it or he did special effects? He directed it. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Did we do Ghoulies 2 we like did, years ago? We did Ghoulies. And then we, and we did, did Ghoulies 2. We've done, we done both. I, think I so. have not seen a single wait, Ghoulies movie. Wait, we did Ghoulies and then we redid Ghoulies, didn't we? No, that was no, Spookies. That was spookies. Oh, that was Spooky. That was spookies. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It was Spooky. <laughs> right. Can't believe Sean brought same. the toys. I, did, I brought it once. I brought one Ghoulie here. <laughs> no, and, Spookies you brought twice. Oh, Spookies I brought. <laughs> yes, sorry. No, no, no. Travis brought uh, Spookies the first time. I brought yeah. it back. So you one have of to you do it brought, better. You did the legacy sequel. One solution. of the Ghoulies and the other of you brought the other Ghoulies. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's They'll right. get you in the end. I remember that was the yeah tagline. At least um, I didn't. I didn't see in the in the credits. We were at the beginning of this. Um, I didn't see his name unless I missed it. But everything I read said Don Mancini helped wrote write this. this? Yeah. yeah, under a different the, name. What? Yeah, the, yeah. Don Mancini wrote this under a different name. Yeah, Don Mancini. We would know from Godfather of Chucky. Yeah, mm-hmm. come on. Yeah, and yeah. he's still like the showrunner creator for everything oh, yeah. right like yeah, he's, he's always had different. a grip on that right yeah, yeah. good yeah. for him yeah i, I it threw me off because i had I forgotten that i read that it was under a different name so when it popped up i was like yeah that's not right you know people <laughs> yeah. say that chucky tv show is really good i've never watched that's it but i've heard, heard it's really good I yeah it. yeah, yeah. it's on like three seasons now yeah or something like that. Seasons coming out. but i like the it's uh chucky is still like there, there hasn't been like a, a remake i guess no. in the chucky timeline there's still it's just going, going the yeah. way that yeah. they all should have done but wait but know. that one remake with the opera oh, plaza fuck, right. that wasn't yep, yep, a remake the Mark oh. Hamill yeah, yeah it was, like, oh, it was yeah. but they that have was. still continued on and they the said path fuck that the we're movies. still yeah. going with the original timeline you guys ever I mean, watched that no because yep. i listened Watch to it, you to yep. review it at the end of the Watch year that was the movie it foretold megan yeah yeah interconnected killer doll wi-fi connected killer doll it's mark hamill's voice it's chucky uh, yep, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a horrible movie. I forgot all the reasons I didn't watch it. <laughs> it's yeah. a horrible movie. Um, okay, so this movie is uh, short. Uh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> there's, there's episodes Good. of Game of Thrones longer than I this. I just want to yeah. put that out there as a Good. as a pro, right up front. Yeah. It's a short movie. Short movie. <laughs> right, yeah, we're surprised. We're I think happy. it's Death an, to the two hour movie. It's an hour and seventeen minutes yes. long. Uh, we and the, and that, the first 17 minutes is the cold open in the credits. Yes, <laughs> yep. it is. It's a very long credit scene. Amazing. Cold open. So it's about an hour long movie. It's not even that because there's credits <laughs> yeah. at the end. And there's know, reused like footage minutes. a lot. Yeah. It's like a 54 minute movie. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to wonder, is this like, I mean, how did this, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, they nope. just kind of. This is one of your throw it together kind of. It feels like it. It though. feels this, like a lot got cut. I mean, does it feel like it was filmed in ten days? Is that yes, it, it does. Ah. Yeah, you'd be right. Okay. Yeah. So was this monster? I don't know if you know. Uh, concocted specifically for this movie, or yes. was this something brought? Like maybe he had sitting around, and just like all right, we can use this. 
Um, no, it was specifically brought for this. Okay. You okay. Know, I can tell yeah. it was done quickly because that yeah. thing don't move much. <laughs> but it moves and looks better than Rawhead Rex still. That's I like true. it better than Rawhead yeah. Rex. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, actually, like, did, Rawhead Rex didn't, didn't move at all. It? What? Did Beekler design Rawhead no. Rex? No, 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 no. No, I don't remember the company. Oh, was that Tony Gardner? It was... Ooh, that might have been Tony Gardner. I just, like, instantly like, go to his defense. I'm like, no, no. he yeah, didn't do like, that. No, he wouldn't. Not Beekler. Not Gardner. Yeah. Not Beekler. Yeah. Well, I mean, so it's a very cheap movie. The yeah. creature is the reason it exists. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever read like a figure on the internet and you're just like, I have no proof that that's wrong, but I'm telling you that's wrong. <laughs> when I read like what the hypothetical budget was for this movie, I was like, no. What did it say? <laughs> what What do you think it was? What do you think? Three hundred fifty thousand. Hypothetical was well, or the real one. Like, no, no, because I've I've only seen this one number, and okay. I'm like, no, that can't be right. I refuse to believe that's correct. Well, I'd I mean, say we got about a million, million five as really? a budget. No, because yeah. back then you could do like a Friday the Thirteenth movie for that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna shoot for like five hundred thousand. I'm gonna go with three hundred fifty thousand yeah? dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nine hundred thousand. Nine. Okay. Wow. So it's almost okay. a million. I don't. I don't feel like I see it on the screen. Right. Thank you. No, I was like, I don't no, believe it. No. But I don't you're buy paying it. for. Did the that monster. decapitation take like a third of the budget or something? You know. You gotta fly know, everybody to Italy. You know, like because I know because right the story Charles Band bought the uh, Fellini stu- uh, studios mm-hmm. right. And then, and he bought a house there where he shot uh, Castle Freak. And then right. he was like, okay, we're just, it's cheap to shoot in Italy. So we're just going to do everything we here. This giant <laughs> castle. Everybody shoot here. But then you got to fly everybody to Italy because, if I'm not mistaken, everybody in the cast of this movie is American. Correct. Yep. So there's no Italians mm-hmm. in the cast. And it's a small cast, but yeah. Yeah. And it's a very small set. Mm-hmm. A very small set. Yeah. Some might say a claustrophobic location. A little bit. Um, and then you got your monster, and then you got your monster crew and, that you have to bring over to with the big rubber yeah. thing and all the animatronics. And your and star power is Jeffrey Combs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Jeffrey Combs. Uh, so this is eighty eight <laughs> for mm-hmm. for the opening. Your star power. Yeah, okay, but, but that's ten minutes long. So yeah, but I thought this was a Jeffrey Combs movie. <laughs> well, he's not. He's like. It was he like third Liar. build, or he was even further down in the. Uh, opening cast list because i don't think you know like i mean obviously reanimator was out there it was like a hit among like horror fans yeah and from beyond is out at this point right Mm -hmm. because that's 86 and so he hasn't made his transition into star trek i don't think Mm. uh by this point so it's like and either he's still doing movies with Stuart gordon and stuff Mm -hmm. like that so it's not like i mean i'm sure he has a negotiating you know position and can get some of that budget maybe you know, a good portion of the cast yeah. budget was to jeffrey combs is like we'll reel him in yeah Same and I'm, sh- I'm sure a big part of it was just that you know his buddy beekler was doing a movie i don't think combs is on the poster art they don't sell it as like a no. jeffrey uh-huh. combs no. movie no he's not on the poster. nor should they yeah, yeah. no uh okay so who so you we have a small cast Mm -hmm. and jeffrey combs is in the cold open he's dead before the credits are over (laughs) in the opening 10 minutes well okay before we get to the cast then why don't we go through this okay so there are what is the setup of this movie who is jeffrey Mm -hmm. combs in it and what's 30 years ago colin Mm -hmm. we have colin childress a cartoonist who has created this comic book series called cellar dweller Mm. And yeah, that's where we start. <laughs> okay, this is we're going a cartoonist for, that wears a lab coat, as as yeah. we all should. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. when hunched over when you're, a drawing board in your basement in your cellar, just I wearing mean, a lab coat. Which I was like, I don't know if that's the best place to be doing your he, art. He may have no. just wandered over from reanimator. Re-animator. Re-animator. Yeah, well, it looks like and the like, set. We'll shoot this. Yeah, and then we'll get the yeah rest he's of also done. wearing a bow tie. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, he's uh, dressed in the night. He's going to work. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter if he's working from home. He's he's going to work. (laughs) Oh, I admire his spunk. I don't do that for working from home. Definitely not. So he writes Cellar Dweller Mm -hmm. in a cellar of a log cabin out in the middle of the woods. He is the Cellar Dweller. Yeah. It looks like the Evil Dead cabin. It does. Mm -hmm. It really does. I was thinking that last week when we were watching the Evil Dead remake. I was like, we're going to revisit this scenario (laughs) next week. With an evil book? Cabin and an evil book. We're going to bring this back. (laughs) There's a lot of similarities here Mm -hmm. because there is a book and it does have incantations and uh, things uh, are brought to life from it. Um, Mm -hmm. I did think that at some angles, I was looking at that basement set and I'm like, this is the basement from Reanimator. The stairs are in the same place. Right. I'm like, they've just read. 
redress this, yeah. it's probably the same same place. Yeah, Moving some uh, drafting tables away. and move out the lab Me carts. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that was probably it. They're probably just like setting up, and he's like, oh, here's my lab coat. And he's mm-hmm. like, well, put it on. Put it on. It'll be a callback. <laughs> right. Along with the very obvious poster in the background of mm-hmm. one of the shots. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a little call out to both. I saw the troll poster, you the know. Dungeon Master poster, mm-hmm. and the giant reanimator poster hanging mm-hmm. on somebody's wall at some point. So, okay, he's a cartoonist. He's working on the latest mm-hmm. issue of Cellar Dweller, mm-hmm. and he's got this fearsome beast, which looks like um, an orc. Yeah, like With a werewolf ears. orc. Kind yeah, kind yeah. of like yeah. a werewolf orc Well, it's part werewolf we come to learn later. Yeah, part werewolf, part vampire. Part ghost. Part, part, part ghost. It's part everything. <laughs> they said part yeah. ghost and part something else, and I was like, well, this did. is too many things. This it can't be all of ghost? these. Yeah. It's crazy. Just say it's a demon. That's all you got to say. You don't yeah. need any yeah. more yeah. explanation got, than that. It's got long uh, uh, dog soldiers like Yeah, it does. Hands. It has yeah. a silhouette like, like, like dog hands. soldiers. Yeah, it does have like a fully articulated face. I was very, once it blinked, I was like, ooh. Ooh, even they got blink <laughs> motors in there. Look at that, you know. Yeah. Uh, Fancy. Usually they get mouth motors and they go. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I was like, all right, but I mean, they should know what they're doing, right? But, but they, the thing so. is, yeah. it being all these parts of things doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they employ, you know, vampire right, werewolf no. lore no. to defeat it. It doesn't like mean the, anything. The only thing that actually like shows through is part werewolf. Yeah. yeah. Like, all right, yeah. I can see yeah. that. The rest of it's like, I know. Right. right. And yeah. At that point, the teeth don't matter. It's like, oh, there's a vampire. No, it's werewolf. Teeth. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just, and this yeah. very much reminded me of a monster we watched before, and I couldn't pinpoint which one it made me think of. Rod Rex. Yeah, I was, I was thinking Rod Monster Rex. in the Closet was the only one I could, yeah. other one I could think of. <laughs> It felt familiar. It did. Not, like night a beast. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. Something. Uh, maybe a little night beast. Maybe a little night beast. Something in spookies, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Something. Um, so anyway, mm-hmm. the cartoonist, right, looking for inspiration for something that the, uh, the that they can put in the word bubble, turns to this gigantic ancient tome of forbidden knowledge, with a uh, you know the pentagram on the front of it, right. Because all artists have these kind of things for inspiration. Yeah, I mean, Michaela can... does. Yeah, yep. oh, yeah, I got a whole like secret library full of this kind yeah. of shit. Yeah, he's only, he's only got the one book. Yeah, the yeah. One book he needs. Yeah, and he flips it open to a page because we're we're by the end of this movie we're convinced there's only there's only like four lines of uh, yeah, four in, pages in this big ass book. They couldn't they couldn't get like scrap paper to stuff this thing with. They like man, they really cut corners. Like that's where's this nine hundred k at? You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> Yeah, the not, rest it, has not yet been written. <laughs> <laughs> Only one page in this demonology book. It's like huh? those four pages, and then it's like the future is yours, and <laughs> like, then yours what? alone. <laughs> so, he, yeah. well, he reads Thank a passage, <laughs> which will be the only passage that anyone can ever find in this book, which basically says if you uh, dwell on evil or, or think about evil, then it will uh, it will take form or something like yeah. that, right? Yeah, and he's like, oh, that's like, good. Like, like man allows it to. Something or um, woe be unto him who, <laughs> yeah, um, who thinketh are, yep. upon the evil, for the evil will take form, <laughs> and so it does. It appears and in so the room, it is. Them, yeah, and so boom, the thing appears, and a semi clad <laughs> woman also appears, and yeah. the thing attacks her in his basement. Yeah, yep. I just want to point out that I brought a movie that within oh, yeah. the first two minutes has a monster and boobs. Yeah, I yeah. just want to point that out. That's solid it work. Is, it is that is commendable <laughs> right you. there. Uh, well, yeah, you start strong, you got to end strong, so we'll get there. Yeah, this is <laughs> exploitation movie uh, math is what you have to yes. do. Yeah. Yes. So, um. He he, a squared plus boobs. I like the way that he, <laughs> he flees Cock the basement squared. and then uh, <laughs> he comes at it with an axe. And then he realizes that by if he sets the page on fire, mm-hmm. he will banish the creature to the nether realm. Mm. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately for him, he, he puts still some for paint him, thinner. He loves and, to watch fire. Yeah. yeah. I know, because he's not very, like when the whole place is going up in yeah. flames <laughs> around him. He's very calm about it. He's just like, well, I guess this is my. Demise. Thank God that's over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey Combs, a very, uh, you know, I mean, I've always liked him and everything. Oh, that I've sure. seen him yeah. In. But I agree, Sean. Uh, I think you pointed out when we watched From Beyond, the, the way he like opens his mouth and you can't see his teeth is, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it just his makes you uncomfortable. Lip yeah. down over his front teeth. Yeah, yeah. It gives him a creepiness. Um, and his mouth is always open, so it's always like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
He doesn't really have much to do. He's basically blessing the movie with a cameo. He basically, yes. Yeah. That's what it feels like. It's like, get him into the theater. It's like, ah. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, he ends up, him. so what he how he sets this up is that somehow the book falls into a chest mm-hmm. and while the, <laughs> the whole place burns uh-huh. and the fire destroys everything, cut to the present day. Oh, the the cellar dweller disappears. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. In the fire. And yep. so mm-hmm. and he's also killed in the fire. And presumably mm-hmm. this woman who vanished or mysteriously appeared out of nowhere from his comic book right. is there because later they think that he killed himself and, and made, her. Yeah. And her. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. How are how do we find that information out? Um, well, now that you say that I <laughs> is there a <laughs> newspaper? Uh Wait. Did he burn just the one page? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. He, but then yeah. the whole he basement fire, but then went yeah. spilled it so and put it down in the fire. Shouldn't she be gone too? Yeah. Based on yeah. lore that we find later in the movie. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Um. <laughs> Besides the you point. <laughs> Stop <laughs> now, Holly. Yeah. Yourself. yeah. Murder victim. So yeah. This. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> We should we should know the uh, comic art in this movie is important. It was done by Frank Br- Frank Brunner. Who did all the Doctor Strange comics? Oh, nice. really? Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They got some. Uh, I was wondering who they had to do it because yep. it did look professional. Yeah, now it's really good. You're yeah. saying that now. I'm wondering if there was a connection because um, Full Moon later tried to do a Doctor Strange movie with mm-hmm. with what's his name. What's his nuts? Um, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Combs. Yeah, mm-hmm. he Dr. plays Doctor Mordred. I think they had to rename it. And, oh, and yes. so it's not oh, Doctor yeah. Strange, but I think it was the script that they were developing. And now I'm wondering if, like, oh, they were with that guy and talking with him, probably. You know, about doing a Doctor that Strange adaptation. Interesting. Huh. Don't um, together. Yeah, we need to watch that at some point. The, I think so. The original, the pseudo Doctor Strange <laughs> movie. Well, that's not even the original. There, I think there was one for TV or something in the 70s. Or, oh. Um. So. Mm. So now it's so modern what, day. Yeah. yeah. So modern day. All right. So this is the little cottage cabin in the woods that uh, he yeah. used to uh, work in and right. burn, burn the whole basement and somehow save the, the house. Yeah. And what is it now? So, and who's there? Yeah. So now the evil dead looking cottage is painted with flowers and a mural mm. and it is now a artist's colony. Mm. And the name escapes me. Was it Thorn? Thorn. Throck, Throck Morton? Oh, Throck Morton. That was it. No, that is. I was about Throck to say Thorncock, but that is not. That is not. I wish. Throck, 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 Throck Morton. Throck, Throck Morton. Throck Morton. Throck Morton. Which is a it's mouthful. Which Jesus. is a great rock band. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was like, uh, who came like up with that one? Yeah. Kudos to you. Well, did, did you guys Mancini. see that name in the credits or something? Was that like some crew member's last name or something? No. I'll have to ask Don Mancini. Yeah, it's Don Mancini. having a lot. Don Mancini. Mancini also didn't he create or he had something to do with was it Channel Zero on Sci Fi Channel he and, and Hannibal right he yeah, wrote a bunch yeah, of yeah. episodes he, of he, Hannibal. Yeah, he did he did do a lot, did of, Hannibal. A lot of Hannibal yeah um so anyway so we're introduced to our main character who's Whitney name, Whitney thank you very much <laughs> uh, played by and her she's under an alias in this movie Deborah Ferentino yeah but that's not her her name in the credits no. Deborah um, Maloney. Okay, but it's Deborah Fer- Fer- uh, Ferentino. Ferentino. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm like, man, I've seen her in something before, and I went looking, and I'm like, nope. nope. <laughs> I know. She was in uh, Stephen King's Storm of the Century, the 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 TV series, yeah, or the miniseries, or whatever. It know? was a miniseries, yeah. yeah. And that's like, I'm like, outside of that, I yeah. No, there was only two people in this movie that I recognized. Who's the, the other one? The blonde? Is it the blonde? It's not the blonde. I recognize the blonde from Did something, you? although she looks like D. Wallace Stone, so that just may be it right she, now. Um, when that she was, first wait, which, her, wait, which one? The the performance artist or yes. the video whore? Performance artist. Okay. The performance artist. The, which video whore? <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Jesus. That one or the video whore? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that came out. <laughs> I don't know the, the performance I think artist we having some feelings here. She Holly, looked like uh, Linda <laughs> Hamilton from The Terminator yeah, when we first saw her. Like yeah. she's got the hairdo, aka um, video whore. Yeah. Yeah. The performance artist that was Lisa. Uh, that's Cheryl Ann Wilson. You recognized her. He recognized, I recognized her. her. Oh, you recognized she her. looked familiar. Okay, I did. I don't I'm know. Sure her she's popped up somewhere. I tried to look up her, yeah. her IMDb, but I didn't see anything. I no, the but. other person that I know is uh, Yvonne DiCarlo. Yeah, Yvonne DiCarlo is yeah. loving it. Lily Munster. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, so this is like a late, 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 late career. Yeah, yeah. is it? Because she yeah. did Broadway or something after this, didn't she? She did some yeah. stage work. Yeah, mm-hmm. she died in the aughts. 
I think so. I think so. I think, right? Well, yeah, she looked well, all right. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like she survived. No one yeah. started beef well, with we her. Yeah, I would say we can't say anyone died <laughs> yeah, anymore. Yeah. We got to be sure. I think she died fairly recently. Don't say that. I, 2007. 2007. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah, because she was also, if I remember correctly, in the Ten Commandments, wasn't yes. she Moses' yep. wife in the Ten Commandments? Yeah. Was that like her big yep. star breakthrough? Uh, anyway. She was in Band of Angels, too. I forgot yeah. about that. I don't know what that is. It's a movie from the 50s. I mean, I would think... Clark Clark Commandments was probably yeah. her biggest. Yeah. She's and like then old monsters. Hollywood uh, yeah. stardom, you know. So. Have you guys ever seen her like modeling pictures? I think she was like so gorgeous. when she legit did like spooky oh pinups. Like there's yeah. like she has a cat, like a black cat Halloween pinup yeah. that's really cute. Like right. yeah, so, I like knowing that she was like a spooky lady in real life she too. Was. Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. need to look up her old pictures. She looks her, like yeah. a spooky lady. Her spooky pinups are so mm-hmm. hot. I love it. She reminds me of. Um, who was uh, the madam in Suspiria? I oh. want to say it was Gene Simmons, but it's not Gene Simmons. No. <laughs> no. I know who you're Gene talking Simmons about. was in Dark Shadows. Yeah. Oh, I know crap, who you're talking about. She was another. Yeah. Right. Can't remember her name uh-huh. right now. Madam, madam Blank. But um, so uh, Yvonne DiCarlo is like the. Mrs. Briggs. She's like the yes. house mom. Okay. Because every of. artist colony needs to have one of those. I guess. Well, somebody in charge. There's got to be a manager of some sort. Why? You can't just have. You're gonna leave a bunch of artists alone in a house. I mean, they're you know how annoying that would be. No. I mean, they're all adults. They're, they're adults. paying to rent the space. That's well, how it's gotta be someone works. there who you know takes the money, is in charge. Oh, yeah, but that's like a. The place there's down. a difference between like an owner or a property manager and like a house madam. Those are all very so different she does things. Them all. Yeah, the th- I'm just very confused by the dynamics of this house because right. the, yeah, they talk about how it's like a school. So it's like okay, so this is like a dormitory, right? But. There's no like other buildings. It's just this little cabin. Right. Yeah. This it's seems like confusing. a budgetary this, thing. Like this feels like a scam. <laughs> yeah. This feels yeah. like. <laughs> well, I was like for the movie. I'm like, okay, we're we're gonna set a movie in a school. It's gonna be an art school, and it's like, well, we got a cabin set. Can you can you do this in a cabin set? Sure. Home school. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a colony now. Man, I wish it would have just been art school though. Like because man, they got some of the art school like stereotypes just right, and it was. So so cringy. It was taking me back to art school. Oh, and I, man, great. there was, was some it, was people. Was the finger I, painting? I, there's like, okay, art school is mostly kids like that. That's what makes it insufferable. Well, the That's kids what, like yeah. that being, what's his character's Phillip. name? Philip. Philip. Yeah. Okay, so Philip is the insufferable finger painter. Abstract. And we're not joking. We're not artist. joking. Legit He's a finger, a finger painter. Yes. We thought that it was maybe like somebody just hired their kid to do like the, the, the quote the unquote. The, yeah, the props. And I'm like, at least get the production yeah. designer or somebody. And it's like, no, at some point he acknowledges he's trying yeah, to make the world's painting. greatest I, figure yeah, painting. I just love how Ivana Carlo is talking to, um, I forgot her name, the main character. Whitney. Whitney. Whitney, yeah. She's like, I don't know if your tripe comic book belongs here. And it's like, this guy's fucking finger painting? Right, right. I yeah. know, the snooty, Where, the snobby. What, your, the what do you like, <laughs> yeah, lady? Like, there's more talent in it, like a quarter of a frame of her comic than there is I'm in like, his entire piece. He must pay a piece. lot of uh, money. She's the most talented person in this school. Oh, hands like, down. hands down. Yeah. Because, I'm sorry, this performance art chick is just a cringe fest. And <laughs> then we got seriously. Are we saying we hate performance art? Yeah, I, I will go on the record saying I hate performance so. art. Yes. Like, it you always makes me are un- annoying. It makes me yeah. uncomfortable. It always makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> like the scene in She's All That looks like art compared to Oh, this. yeah, because that's actually like well-crafted yeah. and like it, they're working towards something. This yeah. is just, I. she made this up on the spot, right? That's what. That's what's annoying about performance art. <laughs> they is were like, literally like, they what don't what put I said. Any, it's, like, it's like watching a bad improv Yeah, group. It's just, you can't do it. They don't put any effort into it. It's prop improv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got balloons and dolls. What can you do? Yeah. Yeah, she does yeah. this it's weird. It's a meditation on death. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> death, <laughs> death is sad. Death so, is sad. That was a good one. <laughs> we've got a, <laughs> we've got a <laughs> performance artist, a finger painter, yeah, and I wish, a, a cinema verite video yeah, artist. I, that would I be wish, the video whore. Yeah. I wish it, yeah, that was the video whore. <laughs> that was the video whore. <laughs> I wish it'd be like a situation where you look at a painting and be like, wow, that's amazing. And then you find out it was just done with fingers. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. my God, that's amazing. Yeah. No, right. this is legitimately like a preschool finger painting. Yeah. Like on paper, taped up to the wall. And when yes, she looks horrible. at it, that was funny too. I'm assuming it was intentionally funny. She's like, "Oh yeah, you got like a cow in there." So he's like, "That's <laughs> anguish." That yes, you know. That was man. Okay, okay. Angst. He said, angst. That's, angst. Yeah, that's, that's angst. That's angst. And I did love that she's like, "You got a cow in there and everything." <laughs> that's like, exactly. I'll put it on the fridge. That's exactly what art school is like, though. There's always because like you have to do group critiques all the time in art school, and a lot of times the teacher will call on you and you have to say something even though you got nothing to say, and. 
there was always one kid, it was sometimes more than one, that had no natural talent, but they had money and they had parents that made them believe that they had talent. Yes. And they would that's exactly how they would react is you'd be like, well, this, this, this. And they'd be like, no, you read my painting entirely wrong. Like that archetype mm. is out there. Oh, my God. I was very triggered by some of the it stuff makes, he said. It makes me think. I probably shouldn't admit this, but I have a painting in my living room that I painted mm -hmm. and my, yeah, I know. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. It means something. How big is it? <laughs> Shut up. But my, but Shut up. It means something. <laughs> you're, you're doing it now. <laughs> but my, my parents were over one day and my dad's looking at it. He's like, where'd you get that? I was like, I painted that. He's like, huh? And I was like, do you know what it is? He's like, is that a, is that a horse? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you have to stand close to it and then no, back away slowly. No, it's not <laughs> a horse. Should have, not, you should have not let it go and been like, what do you think about it, Dad? It's like, hmm. What else, what else do you see? Yeah. Gaunt, angular, uh, yeah. repulsive. What, what emotions? This is, this is what critique is like. What emotions is it about? Things like that. Another thing that, like, that Anger reminded that me of me that question. is, like, I remember, because, like, you're not allowed to give critique that's just, I don't like it, it sucks. Because that's, yeah. like, that's, 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 not that, that's, it's not, it's an opinion, it's not feedback. Right. Yep. And so, like, you have, so, like, but sometimes it's really hard to find something to say. Mm -hmm. So, like, a word will catch on and then people will beat it into the ground. Like I yes. remember, I remember yes. when juxtapose caught my oh. class. <laughs> yeah. I, cause that the wind of juxtaposition yes. came in. <laughs> because it was a, it was a nice right way now. to say things aren't working. Right. Cause oh, you say, I love how you, I love juxtapose, how you juxtapose. Yes. The squares, <laughs> yes. The squares with the vomit. It, it yes. goes yeah. together so and then, well. And then you say, okay, I gave my feedback. I'm done. And then right. you say, it's, it's an easy way to tap out and not offend anybody. Oh, I would love yeah. to take a class and just art bullshit people on Take your art Shit. class. Dude, all, they That's all great. have feedback. It's so so great. Interesting yet what? Then you, <laughs> horrid. But then you have to listen to people say that about yours too. That's that's the rub. I would is just that be like, you have to get it roasted makes me as feel well. Bad too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's I'd always the point. I'd always say things like the contrast is alarming. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to use uh, it has good movement. I use the word yes, movement. A I lot. use that yeah. too. Yeah. It's, it's good movement. Yeah, it good movement. <laughs> I like that it's just art is like just people bullshitting it each other. It is. It absolutely and is. It's, uh, yeah. it's thought provoking. It's yeah. undertone. It's a bullshitting strong. contest. But it's who can out bullshit the other. Out of this, there was because the the last person there is a retired. Hired private investigator <laughs> who is working on his great Philip Nar Marlowe type oh uh, book. God. Yeah, but he thinks he's Columbo for at sure. At one point, uh, somebody is like, you know, because as these people start disappearing, there's the like, well, where where are they? And it's like, well, he's probably off performing a scene, and he got so lost yeah. in it that he can't find it. You know, whatever. well, that's because we're introduced to this character at uh, he just, uh, like, randomly. Run yeah, he, he runs just, in, grabs he, the blonde. He's he got a gun. He runs in and holds up the art show. Yeah, yeah. And he's just like, he give me all your art. He shoots one of the paintings. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he shot the, yeah, the, he the, the sculpture. Yeah, yeah sculpture. and she was like, you destroyed, you know. Thousands of dollars worth of art, or something, and she says something like that to him, and I yeah. was like, eh, "Yeah, I don't but he's know working about that. through it. It's okay." Yeah. <laughs> This just, is why because I, I thought hate, he was oh. the performance artist, but anyway, right? Yeah. But this We're is what like, I'm saying. Right. It, it turns out he just acts out his scenes to get through writer's block. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but I like the way that the explanation of where he might be is accepted as sane in an artist's right. community. It's oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, it's of course that's okay. all he's part of the out, process. He's stuck in a scene yeah, but there's, somewhere. Yeah, but there's another scene when the performance art girl is literally standing outside screaming her ass off, and she's just like, "Oh, sorry, did I wake you up?" The did others are used you? to this, and she just does it for an anger release. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, oh, it's cathartic because yeah, it's yeah. Uh, you're not a good it artist unless you're letting your up. yeah. <laughs> it's probably like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, the other ones are used to it by now. Yeah, the, sorry just if I woke you. It. Yeah, this place it's seems fine. like hell. Yeah. Hell. Uh, they also accept the uh, the basement that no one goes into and has really weird ghost noises. Oh, that's just that just happens. We're gonna tell you all the most fine. interesting stuff about this room behind this door. It's like, oh, by the way, you're not allowed to go in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's how Whitney is first introduced to the place by uh, Mrs. Briggs. All right. uh, the whole reason you came here is behind that door. Well, yeah. what, what's the reason she came there? Oh yeah. She, oh yeah. She <laughs> yeah. Uh, she talk came, about this movie. <laughs> she, we, well, I mean, we kind of should. Uh, she has come there because she wants to continue on. Uh, what's his name? Colin, Colin Childress. Colin Til Childress's Cellar Dweller comic book. She yeah. wants to. She's. Uh, I think she's got new inspiration for it, and she wants yeah. to create the ultimate thing. And so she goes to the place where he did his work and died. Yeah. She is a massive Cellar Dweller fan. Massive. Mm -hmm. But she's and like those girls that like fall in love with death row serial killers. <laughs> like that's her vibe because like she's telling Philip like I don't believe he killed that lady. And when she said that, I was like, Oh no, you're one of those types. It's like I can change him. I know he didn't like, do I think, it. I yeah, think I loved her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's like it's only log. It's the only logical explanation. You're like, what are you talking about? That is crazy. Yeah. 
So I mean, at that point, I didn't know which I hated more, her or the finger paint guy. I mean, I'm gonna go finger paint guy. That, right? that is a bonus to this movie. Reminded of him. Is, that's the bonus of this movie. Is you're fine with all these people dying because they're all kind of suck. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, there's a there's a there's a conflict. Oh. Uh, is there? Yep. Between Whitney and Angela. Amanda. Amanda, the video whore. Video whore. Yeah. <laughs> Who I think may have also been a sculptor. Or were they talking about video sculpture? Because no, I'm was, not in no, sure. No, she was the... saying um, that she's done like every like medium throughout. Art that was school. the critique. Remember, yeah. is that like she she keeps changing. she keeps changing flaking changing and changing right. her major, and... and she was like, career is is organic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is which is code for I'm not good at any of them, so right. I keep giving up yeah. and trying a new she thing. She was a yeah. sculpture whore. Mm-hmm. Anyone, oh, that, anyone yeah. that changed, yeah, if anyone out there that changes. Anyone out there that changes their job once a year just say your career is organic. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But she looks 20 years older than Whitney. Yeah. Like, yeah. But they apparently went to the same, they were in the same class. They used to be friends, it sounds like. Yeah, Yeah, but what happened? Yeah. Um, uh, Amanda got a fellowship over Whitney because she basically bought it. Yeah. Yeah. And and we get the impression, oh, I like, there was a monologue in there that I'm like, man, whoever wrote this, you know, (laughs) was the, uh, when Whitney is outside with the screaming performance artist yes. and is like, if I had one enemy in the world, it would, be Amanda. It would probably it would be, be Amanda. Amanda. And then she goes into like, when I was at school, you know, and this whole, mm-hmm. like the history <laughs> of, <laughs> between them. So she hates Amanda. Don Mancini. <laughs> <clears throat> and one night, right? Because Amanda, actually Amanda's in cahoots with Mrs. Briggs because Mrs. Yeah. Briggs doesn't like the kind of pop yeah. art that Whitney wrote. You're right. Mrs. Briggs like she gave a, yeah. she gave a, a Whitney sp- has seen <laughs> Mrs. Briggs before because she gave like a lecture on pop art and then right. she the, comes the, the, in. The decline of pop art which mm. she apparently was for. Yeah. I know. Like yeah, She's like yeah death yeah. to pop art. Yeah. 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 That's, it's yeah. like that's, it's dying and good riddance. Because I think that was the guess. thing Whitney challenged her at yeah. that. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Like, no no. It's, what? Okay. D- did I miss this? What is the benefit of coming to this art collective? Exactly. A creative space. Um, you don't believe in creative spaces? There's uh, a board I, of directors. Not, not one that I have to share with people seen. for no reason. <laughs> no, that's another. That's why would I not just work at home? It's one of the reasons I don't understand this place. Yeah. They make it sound like it's like a school. Yeah, but, but it's, it's not. not a school. Nobody's teaching anything. Yeah. And nobody's getting like exposure or like moved up in their career by being here. No, Correct. I think this is where you come to work on your art, and that's it. But why do you have I, to live there? I yeah. think they maybe. At the beginning, during the cab ride, when she arrives at the place, there may have been some dialogue about, like, gotcha. you know, if I do this program, but I can't remember. Yeah. But it seems like maybe it was there. I guess it would make a lot more sense if it was like an internship at like this never, comic book company or something, just right? To wrap yourself in your art and just be... yeah, but like at home, I'm not going to go move into a building with strangers that are, are freaks like this. You know anxiety. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 I think you're right about no, that. No, they're all yeah. very sociable mm-hmm. uh, folks. They like they're getting in each other's business people, uh, and as well, showing say. up in other people's rooms and barging into their workspaces, which is off limits, mm-hmm. which is where Amanda goes mm-hmm. because Whitney's been toiling away on her new cellar dweller inspired comic in the basement. Mm-hmm. And Amanda goes down there and steals her stuff. And then it's like, man, Amanda's pathological because she has to record herself like drawing. Whitney's Copy. drawing, even well, though it's signed in giant, you know, script Whitney. Well, what the video doing, was the video was cropped right where it didn't have her name. Right, and she's doing it to show that, that Whitney is directly copying from the cover of the, uh, directly copying another artist's work. She's oh, I thought copying. she was going to claim. No, she's the, doing it. That's why when they come later, they show the video. It's cut together. It shows Whitney working, and then they cut to. What looks like her copying directly from the comic book. Uh, so she yeah. wanted to frame oh, her for stealing, oh, oh, for oh. not so, creating her own ship, but stealing from previous yeah. cellar uh, stuff. But Which, little does she know that in drawing. That there's fucking Starburst and magic? Yep. Because <laughs> she has summoned, just by drawing it, because she draws, of course, the, she's inspired. She draws the cellar dweller right. itself. Yes. She wants to take over the comic, yeah. Yep. But by thinking about it, she's willing it into existence. And so the cellar will be. Yeah, returns. because she's looking at the like uh, Satan book and <laughs> she's like copying the the text from the book and right, putting yep, it in her into comic. The bubbles and everything. Yeah. yeah. So it's the same as speaking it if you put it in a word bubble? Yeah. It's like saying the incantation from the Book of the Dead. Sure. Correct. <laughs> You're writing it anew. So. She's writing out the hieroglyphics, and it's the same thing. Yep. So the cellar yep. dweller 
returns. And of course, mm-hmm. the cellar dweller carries out Whitney's... The cellar dweller always pops up from just below the camera. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> yep. uh, oh, like just five times. It's just like, we're, they we're reuse really a lot of that cellar. cellar dweller footage for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very menacing. There's a lot of uh, nice shadowy lighting in this movie. Yep. Um, that's actually one of the things I always kind of like. Is it me or does even though this is a cheap Cheap, cheap movie. In some ways, it feels more professional than today's like low budget what movies because they had to cover a lot of things, right? Like they had to hide a lot of stuff and kind of, you know. I think the the cheapness and what comes from that go hand in hand for a horror movie. You're just like, it's okay to have one light; it's bright, but it casts a shadow of a guy holding an axe, which works for the movie. Mm-hmm. So I think there's that level of cheapness versus what you can do with it that works. Well, no, there were some shots I was like, where they were moving the camera around, and there was, you know, I mean, I know I was just <laughs> criticizing John Carl Beekler, so I'm not saying it's like staged well. And some of the motivations is hilarious. Like, <laughs> uh, how do they find that uh, that chest? Oh, we bump into it, you know, um, and it becomes a major plot point. But some of yeah. the lighting, it, like people at the desk in shadow, but the desk is actually lit and all this other stuff. I'm like, okay. And the acting, right, was mm-hmm. like they were really acting. Like I thought maybe she was. They were trying. Yeah, it was like, how come she didn't have a career? I thought she was decent. I mean, when you think of where you are as right, a, right, as yeah. that actor. Mm-hmm. Going like, well, I'm in Italy making a movie called Cellar Dweller is my first like lead. You know, that's why he took it. The script is 50 pages long. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be acting against this rubber thing. Yep. No one, none of my friends are ever going to see this. That's how Yvonne DiCarlo got through it. Yeah. Right. She's like, does no it pay? one will see this. Uh, yeah. I will always be Lily Munster no matter what. I will always be Lily Munster. <laughs> and as far as like everyone else, everyone else is like, I'm doing a movie with Lily Munster. Yeah. 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 I'll learn from her. That's, yeah. the, that's what yeah. I'm getting into. She's an, an old actor. pro. Yeah. Uh, um, it's like they all came together in one group to learn. <laughs> yep, I know. It's like uh, life imitating so art, mm. except mm. they probably didn't actually have a cellar dweller on on the prowl in uh, in Italy I'm when they were guess. making the movie. The cellar dweller kills Amanda. <gasps> no, but the private detective <laughs> does, he? does All I see is him just eating a leg. Like mm. we don't get a kill out of this. We get it in comic book form. Yeah, yeah, which. That had to be, I mean, for you. Well, you see the sake. blood being thrown against the wall. It's like, almost <laughs> see the bucket it comes out yeah, of. Yeah, I could have swore I saw the bucket. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, but we get the we get the kills and just illustrated through the comic book panels um, and with the sounds of the actual murder over it, which is, uh, you know, it's a, a nice artistic flourish when you have no money to actually kill yeah, someone. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can't actually do it. Yeah. yeah. So you just do it. Cut to the drawing. So I guess good enough. Cut back to him munching on the, and oh you hear my. the screams eighty yard in there. I like. I really loved Yvonne DiCarlo's <laughs> eighty yard death scream at the end of the movie. But uh, <laughs> I just see her in a studio somewhere. Like, okay, how much is it? Right, yep. uh, <laughs> how many days in Italy? What's, what's yeah. chasing me? <laughs> uh, um. So <laughs> Amanda's dead, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it ripped apart. But mm-hmm. No body is ever found, no. but the private detective doing his private detective thing because mm. he's inspired now to write his novel. Right, uh, overhears the two women mm-hmm. fighting, knows that oh my god, Whitney killed Amanda. He finds proof. I'm not sure what that was. And then we hear a low saxophone in the well, background. The, <laughs> the proof, and the light yeah. over his desk just gets really yep. low. He is drinking he's whiskey. <laughs> he's got the bottle. He's got the a cigar. Lit yeah, fucking cigar over this his. This is like Capote up in here. Yeah. It the was pr- a sultry he, night. The proof he finds is the the comic that has has formed out of nowhere based on the kill. Oh, so that happens. Yeah. Right. The comic writes itself. Yes. Like Whitney doesn't need to have any talent of her own. The comic writes yeah. itself when she started. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in a way, Amanda was kind of right. Yeah. You know, Justice for Amanda. <laughs> but I was, you know, you're saying you want all these characters. AKA I, video whore. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's our sequel. Uh, Cellar Dweller 2, Amanda's Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> we have not. Uh, Cellar Dweller 2, video whore. Yeah. Which yeah. one do you want? Which one's gonna, which one are you going to pick? I think this guy, isn't this guy, he had the best kill of the movie. Yeah, which, he uh, did. This is the one that uh, his head slaps, his head his slaps his head off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He knocks great. it clean off of his shoulders. And you do see a goopy stump on the yep. neck. Yeah, it's Dude, pretty there nice. Is, there is, yeah, that was the most gory part. Because mm-hmm. a lot of it is just for one person. Close-ups of the cellar dweller, like, munching on, tearing long yeah. strands of flesh mm-hmm. off. Yeah. Of yeah. Which is gross. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Gross, At one yeah. point, he eats somebody's eyeball, sucks on the That was gross, yeah. That was really gross, yeah. 
Um, so now we're two people down in two the down. cast, and mm-hmm. then I think uh, yeah, three to go. Uh, Lisa, uh, the performance artist, uh, in the shower, the gratuitous yes. long scene where she's looking for a towel mm-hmm. and being she walks through this whole house dripping wet naked. Yeah, <laughs> just like, grab a towel. Come on, Philip, stop playing around. Give me the, the towel back. We see most of her stalk and slash uh, death in comic book form. Yeah, uh, yeah. Regardless. Mm-hmm. well, they see it. Uh, this is where uh, Whitney and Philip see it. Before it's happened. Oh, yeah, that's they right. see they it pop up and they, the reading is like, oh no! And they got to run upstairs mm-hmm. and knock on the door. Oh, yeah, because this, this is accelerates where it accelerates really fast. Real quick. Yeah. We're like, yep. We go from them not knowing this much. It's a 54 to, minute movie. <laughs> you, right. And but, like, holy shit, there's a monster killing her and eating her right now. I don't know that we emphasize that, like, as she's drawing things, though, she can pop things in and out of existence. Like, when Amanda's killed, the the, she dr- like takes the doorknob off the door and then we, and we literally get the, star, get the pops. star pop like the starburst white and a little magic music uh, yep and the, the, the doorbell the disappears in real time like yeah. yeah I like the way that she's drawing these like chase scenes in real time as yeah. they're happening the music in this movie is like surprisingly whimsical yeah, yeah. so much magic burp, sound burp, effects burp, burp. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, well, if, yeah it's, and it's working it's like overtime an empty and, nest or something yeah yeah it's, it's Carl Dante that did the music and. I don't recognize him from anything. You know anything else? Yeah, that I instantly forgot everything that I read about Carl Dante. Okay, no. but he was no um, what's uh, Albert ba- no uh, Richard Band who usually does oh, all the yeah. uh, Empire mm-hmm. stuff. Um, so they realize there's a monster, and they and they're like. Whitney has this epiphany, right? Because she, I mean, thank God. She's just putting shit together. Yeah, she's like, don't you From see? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, don't you see? Are you telling me? There's <laughs> yeah. a lot of that dialogue in It's here. a curse, and it's real, sure. and I conjured the creature by, you know, I mean, like, okay. okay you know, I mean, fine. that is what's happening. I like the way that, well, she explains it. This is like a thing that movies do that I'm always like, and, and then Philip, she's telling Philip, like, this is what happened. And he's like the, are you telling me that you conjured a monster out of your drawings? And it's like, who are you explaining this to? Like, right. who in the audience doesn't get it? Well, that's when they're just like, <laughs> look at the screen at you guys. And she's like, yeah, that's, ex- that's exactly That's it. exactly it. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. They pretty much, in those instances, they usually nail down what's happening perfectly. And then if I remember How correctly. How else will we continue on? <laughs> somehow Philip is somehow sucked into the comic book drawing by the monster, which reaches out of the does comic. Does yeah. reach out and grab him? I think it he does, grabs him. At this point, the monster is creating the comic. And this yeah. is the next one that he's created is the one where he grabs Philip and pulls him into the drawing. Mm-hmm. The monster also speaks. It does. Yeah. Which is kind of... It's kind of humanish. Well, we never see it speak. It's, yeah. And this is a VO speak, and we see it mm-hmm. in comic book form. We read its, it's text just, bubble, yeah. and, or it's, are we it's hearing it? It's a very it's ominous... Just, it's like, vaguely threatening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, you will suffer. No, 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 Who's what next? are we saying? Who's next? Uh, okay, wait, who's doing whispery? I don't know. We got to figure yeah, this out. No, just wing it. <laughs> okay, and three, two, one. Who's, who's next? <laughs> yeah, we did no. the same thing. Well, it was creepy. Uh, uh, right? Uh, yeah. oh, was That's how you do it. Um, <laughs> this is your idea. Okay. Uh, so then, Improv. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> We're as bad as them. <laughs> so then, right, uh, Whitney is like, well, everybody, everybody's gone. Mm. Yeah. And so she goes to appeal. The whole investigation of like Whitney as a suspect. Yeah. It's out the window. It's yeah, gone. it was really just. Well, all the, the investigators got eaten. Yeah. yeah. That whole thing. I mean, I guess it kept the plot going as long as it did the uh, the conflict between her and Amanda. Um, yeah. And then the, the private detective getting involved. And then yeah. it's like, okay, you're gone. And then Philip, now he's gone. Yeah. You know, he's the only person who believed you because he saw the monster. So she, she has to go tell Mrs. Briggs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how's that go? For her, um, so I oh, think yeah. we're all slightly confused by this part because yes. yes. Mrs. Briggs suddenly becomes the monster. Yeah, yeah. and we see her like a mid transformation phase. Yeah. yeah, which is what makes it extra confusing. And then a little bit more transformation. Yeah, because yeah. this has not happened so far in the movie. No, right. We have no yeah. reason to think she is involved that this at all. Yeah, and, and just based on what comes next, like I still don't think that she is. Like okay. I think she was just the catalyst for the monster to Be- appear. Right, because yeah. here's here's what I don't understand. 
understand because okay. I, I was paying attention to this movie very closely. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. And I noticed that the Mrs. Briggs monster yeah. has long silver hair. Sure. Where the actual cellar dweller monster is more like a werewolf Brownish. creature. Yeah, Brownish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then, of course, you know, being an astute mu- movie viewer, I'm like, oh, is this a second one? My hackles right. go up immediately. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, Michaela's red second flags. monster. Yeah. We're going. Because yeah. it was cutting to the comic book, but the comic book representation of the Never monster is two. the original version. Yeah. So I'm like, oh shit, she's going to run around the corner and she's going to see the comic book version of the monster, which never happens. Mm-hmm. No. And so then I'm like, is Mrs. Briggs still in the movie? Or did she just turn into a She's monster? Gone after that. And now we've established that the rules of this are, if I'm correct on this, that because Whitney can dream it, or no, the comic's writing itself, whatever, mm-hmm. it's uh, both. that it, is, it she's warping on, reality. It feeds on imagination. Creativity. Creativity, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, it, 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 she feeds even says it, it ingested all the creativity and made itself powerful. That's why it's drawing in the comic. That's right. They even yeah. say it. Okay. Well, I, I'm glad that they covered this. Don Mancini is yes. a fucking And, I, and I, I'm sorry, but I liked Philip's joke. And Which they said one? that it feeds on creativity, suggesting like, well, it ate Amanda. And he's like, well, I'm sure Amanda gave it diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. Well, I liked it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hate Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> I we like, know. you know who I like, though? I like uh, Mr. Michelski mm-hmm. um, because he was the only one at the performance artist uh, performance. Who was like he, he? I like the way they even frame him. He's everybody's sitting on the couch, like and he walks intently, out, and he's like he looks at them first, and then he's like flicks his cigar and he walks out of the fucking room. He does. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I I, I think <laughs> like, it was. I've seen he's like this is dumb as shit. <laughs> I feel, I feel like what they were getting at was that's when he has his moment to go investigate like the rooms and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, he does. But it really did play like. <laughs> I don't want to fucking be here, and he just walks out. Right, and no one's going to stop him. Like we understand. So Mrs. Briggs has turned into a monster, and is now chasing poor Whitney around the house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So you do what you got to do. You got to burn it with fire. But she doesn't. I think uh, if if I'm mis- not oh, mistaken. Oh right, this is yeah. the whiteout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, I agree with the whiteout. Uh, whiteout. She goes down to the basement and she's got her e- art easel and she's got the page with the which is now appeared out of it's nowhere. Attacking her right, and then she's right. got her artist shelf where the she's monster throwing ha- things yeah. at, at the monster. She's literally just like taking all of her inventory of all her supplies right. and just. Chucking it at him. Yeah. yeah. So you figure there'd be some like paint thinner or something that we get thrown at this thing and mm-hmm. it'd be like, ah! White out. But no. <laughs> Arching ropes of white out. Yeah. <laughs> In slow motion. In slow motion. Cascading it's onto the, the page. Yeah. <laughs> it's very gross. The, yeah. Like the infinite bottle of white out. Because it's yeah. just really, a standard, you, like, tiny ass nail polish size bottle but it gets all over her drafting board all, <laughs> like yeah. all over her. i like that there was one shot of her which i i think they cut into and, and maybe didn't see the whole thing but to me it looked like she was doing the holy water uh it did. Yeah, yeah she even like did that yeah, 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 she the like cross. crossed with it yeah, yeah. With the, <laughs> yeah and she's whipping it down on the page and the monster <laughs> disintegrates yeah he disappears mm-hmm. or she because it might be mrs briggs variant mm-hmm. I think it's, it's one fucking, monster. Okay. You guys it's are insane. just the monster. You guys are insane yeah. to think Head, there's more than silver one. Silver hair. It was it's, white. It's the lighting. It's okay. all tucked behind. It's like a Dog the Bounty Hunter. Like, if you look at him right, <laughs> it is. If you look at him right, you can't see how far down it goes until it turns around. And the, the light hits it. That's exactly really? what this thing is. It's got the silver hair and everything. It's just lit different from the front. It looks like it has no hair. Uh, That's it. There's, whole, there's one monster in this $900,000 movie. that like movie. silken glistening hair yeah. like Hulk Hogan? Yeah. yeah, yeah ex- that's exactly it. It's a starker, what, more blonde, where it blends in. What, what do yes. they say on It's Always Sunny? Oh, like a silken <laughs> Chinese man. Silken Chinese. The hair of a, skin of a hot dog, hair of a silken Chinese man. Yeah. That's how they describe Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Skin of a hot dog hot always dog. gets me. Yeah. Silken Chinese That's man. Great. That is very accurate. Yeah. That is exactly yeah. what this was. Uh-huh. Well, undeterred, Whitney now mm-hmm. armed with the idea. Well, no, I mean she's she's whited out. She's the page. whited out, and that like made the monster go away. Yeah. For a and she's like, wait, if I hold the power, I can draw them back to existence. Yeah. Yes. Which this is like, this is just, but this is God power, right? Yep. Like, and 
So she brings back Philip first and is all emotional about it. You're drawing the stacks of money first? Well, she I'm just saying, friends. like, because they joke about bringing, not bringing back Amanda, which, like, yeah. wow, you, that's kind of fucked like, up if you think about what they're joking about next? right now. Not Amanda. Yeah. Well, this <laughs> like is a great Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. Yeah. It is a, a very goofy scene. Uh, well, goofy? I, what are you talking no, about? No, I mean, with <laughs> Philip coming back, you're like, okay, so he appears. She he, likes he, him well, the best. It's weird because it's, uh, it's a weird juxtaposition. <laughs> but he just <laughs> You're gonna use that word out right now. He just he he kind of just pops into existence in a corner, but the monster's also right there. But it's chained. But, but it's but you yeah. but that's not you don't I don't think you even see chains. You just hear them at some point. Yeah. But you don't see they're just like the monsters in like video game ready <laughs> position. <laughs> it's like, what's he doing? Is he a threat? Yeah. What's happening here? Yeah, I was wondering, I was like, why is he not attacking them this yeah, whole time? I was like, like what? Yeah. He's chained he real? To the wall. In the in the in the in the drawing he was chained. Oh. I, yeah, I don't yeah. remember yeah. if you could actually and then you see hear it. it. Yeah. 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 And Philip's like, Whoa, looks like you brought me back. You've got all the power to do this, you know. That is exactly how he sounds in my head. <laughs> <laughs> He's insufferable. Uh, He's there- like, but I'm my own man still. Don't take the wrong idea. <gasps> This oh, is a sitcom. Ter- See, He's the annoying neighbor. It's just like, hey, I think you're hot, but I'm a nerd, so you can't date me. Wah! If they were really leaning into the sitcom shit, they would have like had a scene where she drew like a bigger dick on him, right? <laughs> or just, just like, wait. Or yeah, it would be. Like, like she would erase. She'd second, be like, wait a second. Erase and like, then draw it again. Whoa! Yeah. And then he opens his pants. He's like, oh, nice. Right? Yeah. Maybe there's a glow. Yeah. yeah. I thought actually she was doing. Let's do the remake of Cellar Dwelling, <laughs> yeah, guys. I mean, we got it's this been shit long down. Enough. More pornographic. Yeah. Um, uh, but I thought she was like bringing, like I thought, like you know, she's going to bring back the idealized version, like yeah. all these people where That's man what I is do. not like a, 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 a an anymore. enemy anymore. Yeah. yeah, but she does, I guess, because there's a really awkward insert shot of like she draws their portraits and they're mm-hmm. all in like evening wear. Mm-hmm. Um, uh-huh. Speaking of evening wear, there's a lot of uh, 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 negligee uh, yeah. in this yeah. movie. Yeah. As the women are walking 90s. around, it was yeah. very nice. Um, but uh, she draws Just them all as an aside. Yeah, as an aside, because <laughs> um, I know I was like, oh, we got uh, this is three mm-hmm. or four. Okay, um, <laughs> check the box for yeah, Colin. <laughs> I know. Yeah, this is exploitation. I'm taking she notes. Just this needs a candelabra. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> Oh, I lost my train. Yeah, no, yeah. so she draws them all in, in right. fancy dress. Sitting and on a couch. Yeah, yeah, and then we see that shot of them all, mm-hmm. like, because that when it pans over Yvonne DiCarlo, we don't hear what she's saying, and she's explaining something to yeah. the person sitting. And I'm like, and, and then we were in a place, it was a void, and we I didn't know where it was, and then all of a sudden we were here, you know, well, back on this couch, and it was amazing. Um, <laughs> you and you were there. You, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so with them all restored, mm-hmm. um, when he gets the idea that okay, fine. Now we're gonna we're gonna do this the way that Colin couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna burn the whole place down. We yeah. should say that the, the basement nothing looks like it's been burned at no, all. There's no uh, from this thirty years mm-hmm. ago fire. And so she's like, no, we're gonna do it in a in a, in a bucket. We're still gonna right. do it in the basement indoors, but we're gonna put it in a trash can and we're gonna light the thing on the pages on fire. Yeah, and that'll get rid of the monster. Mm-hmm. But apparently she's an idiot. No, I think the monster's evil magic. Ah, uh, yeah, because okay. you noticed. Okay, so so that's probably it. She throws the monster picture in and burns it, and the yes. monster bursts into flames. Yes, and then all of a sudden, Philip is there. Let's. I just want to make sure we know that. Yeah, and, and in the basement with her. Yeah, and all of a sudden, Philip's. This is Philip's moment to shine. It. <laughs> this <laughs> actor is to act. Yes. To, yeah. He's waiting all of his life for. Oh, like, this, this is, is bad. probably why waiting all his life to be lit on fire. <laughs> Yeah, one. because all of a sudden his his drawing appears in the in the in the trash can mm-hmm. on fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's looking at that as it burns, and he's just, and he's looking he's looking, around at, looking like, at his arms like like he can feel something. <laughs> right, and then someone lights up a flame about an inch from the lens of the camera. Yep, and it's just like, oh, he's on fire. Yep, that's it. But no, he got to no, do and it. And like, he screams. Yeah. Oh he's like, yeah. Ah. No, oh he, yeah. It it's was like something's coming out moment. of him. Yeah. Like, but he does that for the entire time that everyone else is also on fire and disappearing. But no. she yeah. she knows this is happening, and she doesn't bother to put this fire out or Go stop this from happening. Yeah, like grab that. it out of there. Yeah. And they all She's a fire. sadistic god. Look at her. She's like torturing <laughs> these people because they're they, burning to death. They are. And yeah. they're all disappearing in green swirls. Yep. Yeah. They have magic sounds. Yep. Yeah. So it's like you're sucked into the nether world. There's yep. no you. You take them the one magic thing away. You take all the magic yeah. away. So I can't bring them back. Yep. And then uh, I think that's it, except uh, the cellar dweller uh, does reappear. 
mm-hmm. with a message. I think like on the um, was it in the book or on her new newly discovered um, um, a comic book I think panel? It was newly discovered, yeah. Which said something about as long like, as imagination exists, mm-hmm. I exist, or something like that. And mm-hmm. then it does its entrance again yeah, over the yep. thing. And- and- <laughs> takes and takes Whitney as his final victim. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. She get screams in a horrific scream into the camera. Cuts the She black. screams like yep. Jim Carrey. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you guys had an issue, I think, with the uh, the end credits. Oh my all. god! Yeah. What the, the... <laughs> a, a cast so good we we named a him good, twice. Is that yeah, what it said? A good cast should be re- is worth repeating. Is worth, is worth repeating. repeating. That right. is a callback to like thirties movies because all the Frankenstein movies end with uh, you know yeah. good cast is uh, mm-hmm. it's a thirties thing. So, but mm-hmm. this movie is a movie that's an hour and seventeen minutes. That's <laughs> yeah. the thing. So they might as well just say, guys, we need to add a few minutes. Just yeah. just be honest. Just own it. <laughs> And then we get two minutes of Carl's amazing score mm-hmm. over performing, and then it runs out because uh, we stuck with it. And then uh, Sound of Wind until the ultra <laughs> yes. stereo the logo comes up <laughs> yep. and the movie, thankfully. Thanks to whoever <laughs> uploaded this on YouTube. You're the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it you is available from uh, Screen Pick. Uh, Screen Screen, uh, sc- oh, yeah. And Scream Factory put out the Blu ray. It was a combo. With another film, which I can't remember. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't um, know. And then it went out of print, and then they brought it back in to print for a little while, and you can probably still get it. It's a double feature. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what I'm going to. I'm going to find out. Okay. Um, don't wait for me. That's all solid, right. Well, we will find that out, I guess, on the other side <laughs> of the break. But first, we're going to answer some of your mail, and in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Catacombs. Catacombs, oh, right? Yeah. Do you think he, I mean, Igor's the OG cellar dweller, right? He's oh, our yeah. cellar dweller. Oh. <laughs> For sure. For sure. I mean, does he have imagination powers? I mean, we did bring him to life for yeah. the show. Yeah. I mean, so mm-hmm. we, we then are his I mean, god. He, is, he kills imagination. He feeds off the energy of the mailbag. In yes. order to, you know. <laughs> he feeds so. off the, the imagination of our listeners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To, you feed I go, yeah. <laughs> uh, again. That's this is all you. So yep. if he dies, if you don't write in, yeah, it's like it's, tink- it's like Tinkerbell. If you don't believe, <laughs> that's yeah. right. We should start to go fund me. Don't kill Igor. <laughs> yeah. Keep Igor alive. Keep Igor alive. Keep Igor, fed. Keep Igor alive. <laughs> GoFundMe.com. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we want you to participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show, or Twitter at Sat Freak Show, or you can email us Saturday Night Freak Show. Yeah. Yahoo.com. Or How's can, our? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you can, no. you can follow along. I was interrupting. Uh, uh, Wait uh, your turn. Yeah. Damn it. Instagram at, at Saturday Night Freak Show. That's right. Instagram is important, Sean. <laughs> yes. You were saying. How's our sack today? <laughs> well, ah. here we go. That's what you interrupted for? <laughs> he was just. I didn't want to say it after the interrupt. I'm he, just he like, Mrs. Q. Okay. Just a, this is a dumb joke. <laughs> uh, about tonight's movie, Cellar Dweller, Michael Whitaker says. Um, I'm pretty sure I recognize this movie from the video store. Still, you're probably in for something great because Jeffrey Combs and Charles Band are a duo that can't be beat. I look forward to your next episode when you'll probably change your mind and review Super Mario Brothers. Dang, ouch. Ouch. It was burned. Hey, man, COVID <laughs> happened. Yeah. We did Scream 6 yeah. last time we were supposed I to. I had COVID. So. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, Joey Blythe writes yeah. in and says, <laughs> I totally forgot about this. It's been 30 years. Oh. Uh, I just found it on screen picks. Uh, that's yeah, where, yep, yeah. Yep. Um, whatever that is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. And then sounds he says, like a uh, website that's going to steal your data. Yeah. It? Screen picks. Yeah. Um, and then he says update. I just finished it. It's free on YouTube. That's how we want <laughs> yes, it. Yes. Yep. There's, there were two so copies you know, on YouTube. It's too. Yeah. free elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it brought me back to a time when I couldn't get enough of these weird movies and TV shows. I had parts that reminded me of a mix between amazing stories, one crazy summer, and monsters yes. the TV show. I probably wasn't the intended audience for these the, these things being four to nine years old, but I loved it this time. One hundred percent nostalgia. This feels perfect for a, a young person. I wish watch. I would have seen this as a kid, man. Like, yeah, you just get a you get a, a short, you get a tiny bit of nudity, 
and uh, imagination and, is and the and core gore, of it. Right. Like it's about it's about art. It, it's you tell you know, a kid their imagination can create demons. Yeah. Yeah. which looks kind of cuddly. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about the similarities to One Crazy Summer, but that's one of my favorite movies. So mm. It makes sense. You're seeing it now. You're seeing the. Connection. I mean, it's a loose connection. Okay. Is there a monster Cart- in One Crazy Summer? There's an animated scene. Yeah, there's animation. It's oh. yeah. Okay. Uh, Simon, so you need to be high while watching. That. I love that movie. <laughs> Simon Carter says this is one of those titles I seem to have heard of all my life, but I've never actually seen the movie. Uh, the Newfeld says, "Fun fact: the best actor ever is Jeffrey Combs. Mm. He's a good one. Got range, and yeah. he is on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Has been for a while. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's unseated uh, Stallone or Cushing or Lee. He's or probably whoever. catching him. We've got. Um, I'll, I'll bring, uh, I still know what you did last summer, just to put him over the top. There you go. That's what you're going to go to, huh? Yeah. That dude's been in like 80 some movies. Isn't it? I, I, still know. I still know. Yeah. 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 yeah that's um, what I'm saying. All, all, right, right, all right. All right. I said everything correctly. <laughs> Evil Dead was the movie that we watched last week. Adam Kaler oh, yeah. says, uh, traditionally, it sounds like the freak show is musical adverse, particularly the recipient of Michaela's ire. My girlfriend... Yes. And I saw Evil Dead the Musical live and quite enjoyed it. Are there exceptions to this dislike, such as Repo the Genetic Opera or The Devil's uh, Carnival, if they were genre specific? Would there be a horror movie that you think might be fun to get the musical treatment? I've actually heard the Evil Dead musical is awesome. I and yeah, yeah my it. friends have gone I've, and I've seen it. I've heard it's really good. The Splash Zone seems awesome. I want right. to go and sit there. And I heard that the Talking Deer Head is a whole song. Like, yeah, it has yeah, its yeah. own song. Yeah. So, like, I. To answer the question, yeah, like, yeah, genre specific stuff, I'll definitely give more of a chance to, I would say. But I'm like, I don't know, you guys know musical theater people, right? They're the worst. You did know, like the people that are obsessed. Like, <laughs> and then, do we say we did not like musicals at a certain point? We, I think we've I mean, talked we, about we've it over We've talked about how we I don't, don't mind like them. musicals. I just, I, I've seen a couple of them. Yeah. I've seen yeah, more. That's right, because I was the sole defender of Repo the Genetic Opera. You are, I wasn't and on you that will one. still be the sole we defender we of Repo the Genetic Opera. On this show, you can it's, go back and listen to that episode. I might have a different... How long ago was that? Like I wasn't here for that one. Yeah, I wasn't here for that one. Maybe my mind has changed, but there's no way I'm going to watch myself. I think I would be more down to go see like a live show of like Evil Dead than like watch a music horror musical movie that right. makes sense. That is what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Yes, I would like, like to do that more than just sit. You know, there's a, yeah. musical. there's a Point Break musical. Oh, I'd go I, watch that. I yeah. did know that. I need just because I need to know. Then there's like, well, that's like an off, off, off Broadway. But that you know, there's yeah. like Point Frankenstein, break. Carrie, right? Mm-hmm. I think is Dead Ringers or something like The Fly is. Yep. Oh, that's an opera. they've done yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. Um, Travis Leglier writes in about Evil Dead and says, uh, when I said nothing about this movie stood out to me in a previous comment that I think we read last yep. week, he said, I should have said nothing surprised me. I knew they had a budget time and a better setup to make this than the original. This is a well-made movie, but not as good of a remake as say the thing of the fly. I agree. There's no bad Evil Dead movies, but I didn't feel like the remake was a better experience than Army of Darkness or Evil Dead 2. It's a fun episode, though. And Sean, sir, you have to watch Ash versus Evil Dead mm-hmm. ASAP. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a good time. Yeah, I'll get there. I'm I'm, I'm going back. Um, I just watched uh, Evil Dead Two not too long ago, so I got to watch the best one. I, it's, it's still fucking it's hilarious. my favorite one. I still yeah. love that movie. You know the thing is though that that when they made because uh, Universal still owns Army of Darkness, so yes. technically Ash versus Evil Dead doesn't. Too include any of the events from mm-hmm. army of darkness that would mm-hmm. make sense yeah yep uh well, i'm just saying I'm, I'm going through since we have a new one coming out i'm going through the rewatch yeah because don't they get rid of his he's like even the glove from yeah. army of darkness uh-huh. is gone at the beginning yeah of, yeah. yeah but the, the reason why you should watch it sean is because it really goes into like some things about the world that like it fills in gaps that you're like that's oh. a great idea like i think it's the second season where hash goes back to his hometown yeah. and everyone there is like you murdered all your friends in a cabin dude we hate you <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I ashy slashy, ashy slashy yeah. yeah okay I like that and so like I like the reverse of like what happens after the dust settles like it's like we talk about with every movie we watch yeah. how are they going to explain this yeah, right yeah, yeah. you know and it's like, like those are good ideas yeah yeah it's a really yeah. good idea and Bruce okay. Campbell's and the six great. million dollar man is his dad yeah okay <laughs> uh Steve Car- Lee Majors the fall I know guy yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah he's his dad okay mm-hmm. really okay. yeah, yeah. Lee Majors. yes yeah, I thought yeah. he was dead. Yeah. No, he's ashes. Yeah. Dead. Oh wow. All right. Um, and the two the two sidekicks they had are awesome too. Yeah. Dana yeah. De Lorenzo and uh, I can't remember the other guy's name, yeah. but they're great. 
Shit, I Pedro can't something. Yeah, Pedro's his name yeah. in the. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, Steve Carney says extended. Oh, we watched the the director's cut of mm-hmm. of Evil Dead. We, we said did. Steve Carney says extended or director's cuts of films are not always better. They're interesting to watch, and I appreciate their inclusion on Blu-rays. But I'll usually stick with the, the theatrical cuts, especially if I actually saw the film in a theater. First impressions matter when watching a film. Yeah, Indeed. that's true. I like. Well, good I, luck with Star Wars. It mm. Depends on when you got into that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's I I watched the director's cut of Doctor Sleep recently, and that's not better than the theatrical. The theatrical's way to go on that I mean, one. Most so. times, the theatrical, yeah. mm-hmm. even though I guess the argument is always like the theatrical cut is the one that they have to do in a pressure cooker. Yeah, you know, sure. and maybe they make decisions they regret. But it turns out I think that a lot of times those decisions that they had to make, you know, for time and all it 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 did force them to cut the flab and it then depends, end up though. with this it depends on why they're trimming though are they trimming for content because it's too violent or too you know too sexual or are they trimming for time you know what i'm saying like yeah because like we always complain when they trim down violence and stuff like yeah. that to meet a rating yeah, you know that's yeah, the stuff that's you don't different. want edited yeah, you want that right? yeah. back in, yeah. but, um, if it's uh, just trimming for unnecessary like <laughs> factors then yeah yeah like how evil dead 2013 out the all the callbacks cut out that was a good choice yeah, yeah. yeah agreed I'll, I'll take this moment to once again bring up zodiac the director's cut <laughs> the director's cut is far it's like a half hour longer but yeah. it's far. i think it's, most it's fincher better. director cuts are better right and, and this is also david fincher yeah, yeah it's three, a fincher thing that's a nobody it's wild the other version's wild yeah <laughs> there's, there's. Well, he didn't, he didn't have anything to do shit. with the uh, director's cut, but that's like a stuff that he shot, yeah, and, and then intended. Uh, Aaron Don Gilmer says Jane Levy also starred in one of my favorite, unfortunately canceled shows, Zoe's Extraordinary that's Playlist. That's mm-hmm. the one where everybody I've heard really good the songs. Things. Yeah, mm-hmm. they said she was really good in it. And uh, Novato Judoka says uh, it's movies like Evil Dead that lights the little flame inside you that thinks a remake could be good. Yeah. You'll probably be disappointed, but once in a great while, you get a gem. Yes, and I like that Evil Dead's like, you know what? We'll give you something like once every 10 years. And, yeah. And it's you it's perfect. It. Yeah, you don't have to crank it out yeah. Like yeah. next yeah. year because somebody liked it. Scream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't remember if it Sometimes was. Sometimes it lights your soul on fire. I think it was the week way. before that. We did Blood and Black Lace, and Millitime writes in and says, Where can I watch this flick? Thanks to your previous podcast, I've been exposed to and fell in love with the Giallo genre and Dario Argento films. He's quickly become one of my favorite directors behind Carpenter. The music completely helps the movies. And he says, I also love Lucio Fulci, too. You uh, found you have a Giallo student, Colin. I know. There you, there go. you go. I love that. He's going to kill you. <laughs> uh, but it makes everything I've ever done in my life worthwhile. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. Uh, so I it'll think... be an honor to be murdered by this person? There you go. The black-gloved killer. It is, uh, it's on Amazon. Yeah. If anyone yeah, kills Colin, it? you have to do it with a black glove. Yeah. yeah. That's um, the only yeah. way it's acceptable. Way to go. You can, and it's on uh, Tubi with ads. Yeah. Tubi with ads, I think, is mm-hmm. where we found it. And then uh, uh, you can rent it, I think, in a bunch of places. Yep. It's also available. You can get the discs. But um, one of the things I noticed, if you're into Jalos, uh, there's a library app, depending on where you live, called Canopy. Oh, Canopy. Uh, and yeah. they have like uh, just like a crazy amount of Italian Jalo <laughs> movies. I was like, what cheap. the? Yeah. <laughs> but no, they all like the remaster because they. It's like they all come out from like Kino Lorber and they must yeah. funnel to the this library mm-hmm. service. So there you go. I think Kino Lorber's getting in on the genre business. I see them putting out a lot more. It used to be Kino Lorber always felt like a more high level kind of yeah. level of release stuff. Now they're just like horror movies, genre. It's yeah. all getting out I there. Know, westerns and <laughs> yep. crime movies and yeah, all, all, the 4K all the yeah, yeah. They're like I mean, beautiful. Yeah. All those uh mm-hmm. Sergio Leone westerns, yeah. they got them all and um, it was funny. My old boss was like in charge of the library at our college, and she was like, "We're thinking about doing this system called Canopy. I want you to browse it and see and see if you like it. If you like it, we'll do it." We have Canopy. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I was like, "Fuck uh-huh. yeah!" <laughs> How much time do I get to spend on this? Yeah, I will watch everything. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty good. All right, so uh, thank you all again for writing in. We really yes, appreciate thank you. it. Uh, and, and you're keeping Igor from getting the boot out into the street where he will be homeless and homeless have and hungry. to eat out of trash cans. Mm-hmm. Now, we're going to go around the table and like tell you the, what. Like, not the nice trash cans. <laughs> right. <laughs> the banana no, the, the metal banana ones peel. With, the, yeah. with the hoods. The brown banana peel. Drink. Oh, did oh. we mention that she drew in a banana she peel? She drew a banana peel for someone to slip on? Oh, my oh, God. God. <laughs> it also came in a star pop. Yep. Just, Thank you for that. I just wanted thing. you all to remember that. Yep, Amanda, Amanda tripped on it. Uh, now we're going to go around the table, tell you if you should watch Cellar Dweller, starting with Sean. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going I'm to go first tonight. Uh, despite the fact that we did get bananas popping on screen with Starbursts and a few other things in this movie, uh, I, uh, man, I'm glad it was short. Because if it was longer, whoo, although it's, this, this movie feels like it was uh, cut up. It feels like we're missing a bunch of stuff. I don't know. Yeah, for, probably for budget. Yeah. Like, we can't shoot that, so let's make shit, shit up. It's weird, even this. but it's like even <laughs> stuff where they had like when uh, Mrs. Briggs turns into the monster. There's like one eight frame shot of a transformation that felt like like where is that? It feels like there should have been more of that. Unless that was all they could show. They're like this is this looks horrible. This is all we got out of it. Just a shaking mound of plastic. Um, no, <laughs> I don't, I don't no. think so. <laughs> no. no, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, you know, you've heard of Celadrella forever. Um, I don't think I can recommend it. It doesn't. There's not. There's not enough here. I mean, the monster's not doing much. Like we don't see that thing walking. Uh, he is very. Yeah, stiff. you do. <sighs> yeah, you see him catch her. Uh, you run to Carlo his, in the hallway. And, back. Yeah. yeah. I think that's it. Like I think. <laughs> yeah. I think. I think everyone here's imaginations are doing a lot of work and nope. making that thing move because he. There's a lot of reveal, a lot of swiping, and not a lot of going anywhere. Um, there's some cute elements of this movie i like the whoever the retired cop was his whole little thing was pretty fun but i don't know i don't like i don't like these people the actors philip i mean i wish he would have died sooner <laughs> although he did die screaming which was nice <laughs> <laughs> no i don't it, it wasn't uh, uh i wasn't bored but i i don't ever want to watch this again uh, i'm gonna say it's, it's, there's not enough here to recommend it to you folks um not even the mo- no 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 <laughs> um, Colin, what you think? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on Cellar Dweller. I, it, it, it's not, it hasn't ignited my soul enough to say much about it, so I'm gonna pass on it. Uh, Colin, well, I guess I'll tell you what I liked and what I didn't like about the go. movie. So, like, it seemed like um, the appeal of the movie is from like I just like to 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 think of the the people behind the scenes who put this together, right? Because this is like we're gonna do it in ten days. Uh, here's your budget. <laughs> you know, it's uh, less than a million dollars. It's gonna have a monster in it. Yvonne DiCarlo signed on board because she needed some cash or just wanted something to do. And so, you know, I really did think that uh, Deborah Fiorentino, oh, that's the wrong Deborah. That's her real name, yeah. Is that Deborah Fiorentino? That's Ferentino. a different. Ferentino, not Fiorentino. Okay, no, that's, that's a different Linda. one. Uh, uh, Linda, yeah, okay. Ferentino. Deborah Fiorentino. Ferentino. <laughs> I you thought, need to stop with names. Right. Like, stop asking I know, her because yeah, it's not going to stick. Can't, uh, I thought she was like really good in this movie. Like I was like, wow, look at her go. Like she's like really all in. And I mean, she's able to, you know, do these monologues and add shit to them. I'm like, wow, that's kind of impressive. I mean, knowing the movie that you're in, you know, that she's in as an actor, I'm like, wow, she's giving it her all. And that's kind of what I like about actors is when they know it's crappy and they're saying lines of, would embarrass the shit out of most people Mm -hmm. and they're able to commit to it. I'm like, I respect that, you know? Uh, and I guess, you know, just the, I appreciated it more from like a crew perspective, I Mm -hmm. guess. And like, okay, you know, upcoming actor, watch this. Cause this is probably what most of your career is going to be. You're going to get, <laughs> you know, movies uh, that no one's ever going to see. And, you know, on your, as you work your way up, uh, through the Hollywood rung, um, the monster, uh, it's a rubber suit monster. I liked it. It was articulated. They wisely kept it in the dark for a lot of it. Yes. Um, it, it, as Sean said, it doesn't do much, you know, I mean, it, and it, it doesn't, doesn't have wonderful hair and it doesn't look as good as it does in the drawings. The drawings were oh, yeah. like decent comic book mm-hmm. art that we see a lot, you know, throughout the movie because they're, they are covering stuff. Um, what I didn't like about it was, I guess, that uh, there's nothing here. I mean, this is there's really nothing to this movie. It is uh, just something to give uh, filmmakers employment, you know? <laughs> and, like, maybe we'll turn a quick buck on it. We got to yeah. crank this out, so we're going to do the next thing. So, like, I respect what they're doing under that, uh, you know, umbrella. But the end result doesn't mean that you actually have to watch it. You know, I mean, it's uh, a pretty bad. Respect it from afar. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty bad movie. But I kind of like it the same way. Like, this is a, the way I like, like, 50s B movies Mm -hmm. feel a lot the same way. Where you're, You're watching actors committing to doing professional work under 
the goofiest. Just the <laughs> goof. I mean, that's what makes these kind of things fun. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't think outside of looking at it through that lens, it's not. I guess as you said it's short, so you don't suffer very long. But I mean, it's <laughs> it's kind of dumb in its concept and its execution. So I think you can pass on Celery Dweller. Uh, Michaela, what'd you think? I think it's a really a uh, bad execution of an interesting idea, but also kind of a stupid idea. And I kind of like how juvenile, like the mechanism is of like, it's, it's your imagination. Like that's this such a, a juvenile. Episode, yeah. God. Like it's weird that this is a movie about adults and like adult ideas and adult things, but such a juvenile premise. Think, but yeah. I find that kind of endearing and charming. So I think I'm going to recommend it, even though like it is, poorly executed but that's kind of what makes it charming i think Mm -hmm. and i just think it's kind of like a seeing is believing sort of thing with like i don't know i've never seen like a like a comic book come to life monster movie before really so i'm gonna recommend it based on that i mean you've heard the episode you know what to expect just enjoy it for what it is (laughs) and i agree sean though i'm glad it's not any longer because it feels longer than the hour it is (laughs) but yeah but you know that is to its benefit so i'm gonna recommend it holly what do you think Man, what are we? You know what you're getting into. What well, pros? Short. Short. Yep. Very short. <laughs> mm-hmm. Felt short. Good short. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, Michaela, I think I, I, I agree with you on your analysis of um the juxtaposition of yes. cellar dweller. <laughs> <laughs> yes, use that word. <laughs> Um, Colin, I agree with you. I think it's got that air of, uh, you know, 1950s monster movie. What? No, I was just like, you, you, what about me? I'm not done. <laughs> I know. Jesus. That's why I didn't say anything. I was just making hand movements. You're just, just gesturing loudly <laughs> over here. Can't yeah. I gesture? I do it well. No, because I feel like you're gesturing to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. It's my fault. I'll shut up. Um, Colin, I agree with you about the air of the 1950s, like, monster movie. It's just kind of, like, silly and... Like these people are are acting in a serious manner when it's just such a stupid concept and it's a rubber monster and I I think that's why I like it because it's so dumb and <laughs> like I think Michaela said it best is it's charming that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a stupid movie. It's a terrible movie. It feels like a student movie mm-hmm. in many aspects. Um, but the fact that it is so short, Sean, um, I think that makes it... Is that a short joke? Fuck you. No, I'm kidding. It is now. Someone's defensive think, today. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. I think that's uh, I think I that's my why... Yeah. Oh my sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I recommend it. We're done. Yeah, let's, land, let's land this plane. All right. Let's land this plane. All right. Uh, it's a split vote on Cellar Dweller. Uh, watch at your own risk. So um, next week. I'm going to go run around the basement 50 times. i work this out. Well, we're going to be watching a movie next week that's chosen by. Kayla. what are we watching next week? We're going to watch Phantom of the Mall, colon, Eric's Revenge. Oh. <laughs> Which makes you think that this is the sequel to Phantom. But it's not. Right. It is, this is not right. a this sequel. This is the one that sounds like a sequel, but <laughs> yeah, it's not but a it's sequel. Yeah, but it's not a sequel from 1989. Great. Ooh, I wonder so what he's getting it. revenge for. I, I have many questions. <laughs> we'll find out. All right. We'll find out next week. Yep. Phantom of the Mall. It is Eric's on uh, Shudder. It's on Shudder. Uh, so for all our listeners, it's on Shudder and Amazon Prime. Sure. You checked recently, not a month ago. I checked. You know what? <laughs> you know what? When I picked it, I checked, okay? Yeah. <laughs> And then I got COVID. Okay. And it left. Yeah. <laughs> Phantom of the Mall, Eric. You Revenge. can do your homework. Uh, <laughs> all right. So that's uh, next week. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.